Have you got a li- have you got a light on yourself? Yeah. God, you're like a pro. Well, hey man, I I went and dude, I'm in a Set, new place. Setting the bar, dude. Well, I've got, <laughs> I've got a couch. Yeah, you do. Oh, I have nothing crap. like I've got, that. Like, I've got. Hang on. <laughs> Look, it looks kind of nice now. Got the Ken Smith on there. Ooh. Oh. Now is that the four string Ken Smith? It is the four string. Yeah, Smith, because yeah. because there's there might be I don't know. Is there another maybe, Ken Smith? May, maybe there's another Ken Smith in the hopper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just following your. I'm just following in your footsteps, man. I'm just sort of like you. Are, I'm just being trailblazed. I'm just like I'm just in in your sort of like exhaust fumes because oh, somebody else has a Ken Smith six string. Yes, indeed. Hold on, hold on. Have we ever talked about in the pod? I don't know if anybody's listening. Um, Ian has just ditched his cans and he has gone to get his six string. Oh. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, all right, hold wow. on. Let me get these headphones back on. It's just, it's, it's just, just absurd, isn't it? It's the biggest bass. It's huge. I've, I've, it's huge. Is is that the biggest bass you own? Definitely. And, and if I sit it in a stand, so if you're not watching the podcast, which we would, you know, strongly encourage you to do, uh, so you can look of, at our beautiful faces. <laughs> yeah, and beautiful bases. Sorry. Yeah, faces uh, and bases. I regret that rhyme. I regret it, but, <laughs> but it, we're going to let it go. Um, You're a poet. Yeah, you man. Didn't even know it. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> this thing is uh, its beautiful, and it's huge. It's a giant Ken Smith uh, BT6. When I set it in a stand next to other bases, if it's lined up, it sticks like way out. It's like a toe it is stubber. Huge, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just massive. It's um, like knock your knee on it walking by. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And I have yeah. this idea. I want to maybe shoot a video where it's like, because in the States, I don't know if you guys call these this, but uh, we would call this a coffee table base. Right, because it sort of looks like a fancy table yeah, that might yeah, be in yeah. your in your sitting room or your parlor or your grandma's house or something, right? Where you'd like set it on, you know, where I want to set it down and serve coffee on the coffee table base. I think uh I don't know, man. I just keep feeling it. <laughs> I want to have a Dude, coffee on the Ken Smith. It's um, bonkers. Is yeah. it heavy? I mean, it's not crazy heavy. It's probably like ten, ten, ten pounds. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Which and yeah. I actually don't mind a heavy bass. I've never. I know that people talk about like, oh, heavy basses as, as sort of like bad. And of course, if you have some kind of issue, maybe a back issue or something where you know, hang having something that heavy slung on you all night is a problem. I get it, but I don't think um, I've never been bothered by it. Actually, I kind of like basses at least body heavy, so they're not headstock diving so much. Yeah, but. It, hold and hold on a minute, Scott Devine, because you said that you were in my my exhaust fumes, ah, following in the six string, but that is patently false. I <laughs> oh yeah, am in oh, yours, shit. I've got dude. A, I've got a six string already. <laughs> yes, <laughs> dude, you bought that man a bass, and oh, it was, yeah, and did, you yeah. were like, oh, just shredding on it and enjoying it, and then. It disappeared. I mean, I Shall haven't I get seen it? that. Let me, yes, please. Let me go get it. I was yes, playing please, it yesterday. Yeah. Hang on. Yes, Here please. I mean, listen, Scott has this incredible bass called a Manet. I don't know the model of it, but it is outstanding. And it's I think a Paizo pickup it? in it. Right? It's so outrageous. It, yeah. So it has that beautiful Nordstrand like blade. Yeah. magnetic pickup and then it has a piezo pickup in the bridge too as well is that yeah. right yeah so like a blade in the like kind of like neck position it's got a piezo pickup in the bridge yeah simple controls just a volume for the blade volume for the piezo a tone and a awesome neck it's like oh, a geez. yeah it's crazy isn't it and again it's made it was made in italy by uh, a company called uh, um, manet or manet depending on where you want to put the emphasis. Yeah, and it's yeah, exactly. And it's a it's a short scale, so it's like 30 inch scale. Oh, crazy. Like around that. Um and you'd think that, you know, you'd think that the B string would be crap because of that because obviously it's a short scale bass with the B string, but it's actually fine. Mm. And um the guy that makes them out in Italy, his his philosophy is that 
a string response in terms of the lower strings and how they respond are actually a lot down to neck construction and really? rigi- rigi- rigid- rigidity? rigidity. Oh. Rigidity. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got there in the end. <laughs> yeah, making sure that the neck's super rigid. And he said mm. that that's why he thinks that these basses, the B strings, are, uh, are you know, work basically. Yes. So, uh, but, yeah, I've bought another one. Oh, I know. So, so, dude, so. it's on its way to your house now. It <laughs> yeah, it is. It's winging yeah. its way. It's winging its huge BT bodied way on the way to my new house, which I'm super excited to be its caretaker for a moment. Dude, yeah. is that the tracking number right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't put your address. Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, it said to ship to Minnetonka, Minneapolis. That's right. It's, it's coming on. It'll be there on Saturday by 7 p.m. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. And it is oh, the same as yours, basically. It's the yeah. same bass as yours, isn't it? Yeah, so, it's a BT6. Um, it's a BT6, which... Honestly, like I'm a little scared about because I've never felt one. I've never held one. Like I've got the BT4 down there, which is one of my, I'm leaning back. You can see it there. An 80s BT4, which is one of my favorite um, bases. Actually, it's definitely like, you know, if everything was on fire and you could only grab two bases, that would probably be one of them. Wow. Um, Well, hold on. What would be the other? Yeah, you can't you can't hit us with a question like that and then not have a follow up, yeah. dude. Well, either the Alinto P bass wow. or the Yellow F bass. Oh, wow! Yeah, I might go for the Alinto P bass because F bass is so consistent mm-hmm. with what they do and how they make basses. You could get another I one. I think I'd be able to get another one, yeah. Where the Alinto is, I haven't played a load of Alintos. That is an incredible bass, so I'm not sure whether it's just like a weird random outlier. Like unicorn. That's amazing yeah. unicorn right. bass, or whether they're, they're all like that. But I haven't, so I'd probably grab the Alinto P and the, the Ken Smith the 80s Ken Smith 4, and then cry about the uh, the yellow <laughs> F-bass that would be going up in flames. <laughs> but yeah, man, like I, I'm scared about the, the Ken Smith 6 because I've never played one. You are obviously, you are much bigger than me. If anybody doesn't know, and um, it was, I think it was like a comment on Instagram, I think. <laughs> And it was like maybe you and I next to each other, or maybe it was on YouTube, and it was yeah. like this. So, so, somebody had written a comment. He said, "Whoa, Scott's super small." <laughs> and I wanted to respond and be like, "No, dude, I am sort of like Ian. He's a Viking. He has got like thoroughbred Viking blood, and was like, you know, like if we were all running round and sort of like you know and living in caves and stuff like yeah. that, you you be a." You would be a healthy, well fed man. You'd be like wrestling bears and stuff, right? And and I would just be like wasting away. So uh, we would stick with me. But all that to say that I saw you with that that yeah. Ken Smith bass, that six string. <laughs> it looked and bigger dude, than me. It looked bigger. It looked huge on you. So it's just gonna look like a joke on me. It's gonna be like a joke bass. Oh, look at Scott. No way. He, he got a massive bass. Or oh, oh look, he really is tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, here's the thing though. Here's the thing. I love I love the way like big bases look on people that are well, I I should say this, like for me, I like a big base. I've never been a fan of like having a little bass on me. It just makes me feel or like if I see myself playing guitar, which is rare, but right I'm like, "Whoa, that is so bizarre." I've this always loved good, yeah. and like I have some friends who are shorter and who, you know, like smaller people, and I love when they play like giant instruments. I just think it looks cool. And so for yeah. me, like this this thing, I think like on a strap or whatever, I think it looks great. And and also, hold on, you have, like, the biggest hands. You have the longest fingers. I mean, I have you have big hands, giant yeah. hands, dude. So this instrument, I think, is going to be no problem for you. It's going to be no problem. The neck is I'm, super yeah. wide. I mean, it is such a, I mean, but but you're going to be able to tackle this with no problem. No problem it's at all. super wide. I'm it's looking at so that wide. with fear. It's super wide. You're going to love it, dude. It's yeah, like, It's so fun. I am really excited about it. Like, uh, have you been playing that? I guess sort of like 
Should, should I, well, I'm just wondering what I should ask you first. Yeah, like, have you been playing it a lot? Okay, so the Ken Smith, I got it because it was an instrument that I wanted. I, I you know, I'd seen it in Bass Player Magazine, John Patitucci in the 90s, right? Like, oh, I've dude, wanted one yeah. of these for ages, and I had a six. Um, I've mentioned it before. I had a Carvin LB76 that I loved, and I wrote a bunch of stuff on it. It was sort of like the turn for me of being like rock and roll guy into like full bass nerd for better yeah. or for worse, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I really loved that. And then I ended up selling it because like, oh no, I'm not going to be a six string player anymore. You know, I'm going to go back to the, be tasteful and all that. And then, I mean, you know, you turn 40 or whatever and you start yeah. to get those cravings of your, of your youth. Like, oh, I wonder if, so here, here's the deal. I, I haven't played it out, but I just sit in in my room and play it and think it's so it's so beautiful and it's set up so well. It doesn't buzz anywhere. It's like probably the most it's one of the most amazing playing bases I've ever had. Yeah. Um that yeah. said, it's not the right thing for most of the things that I do, either it's live like, or It's records. got a really unique, if anybody's wondering, like, what a Ken Smith sounds like, or, or, or I guess sort of like why we've both ended up with Ken Smith. Like, what Ian's given you, your, you know, his side of the story in terms of, like, yes. was, you know, we're a sim, well, we're exactly the same age, actually. Um, so we grew up, like, listening to this fantastic bass player called John Patitucci, who many people will already know who has a Yamaha signature bass. Well, back in the day, yeah. you know, he played a Ken Smith. And also back in the day in yon yesteryear, <laughs> you know, there wasn't a bunch of educational videos out there. And one of the kind of legendary ones was John Patitucci. I can't right. remember exactly what it's called, but he plays a Ken Smith six string in it. And that is what everybody our age, you know, that was a bass player who was interested in learning. They all will have watched that video, you know, and kind of like geeked out or like that whole thing that he does at the beginning. And then he plays oh, that know. Bach cello suite and it's all insane. of that stuff, right? It's yes. insane. It really so is. deeply ingrained in Ian and myself is this kind of like, aren't Ken Smith's cool thing going <laughs> on, you know? So that's kind of part of the reason why we both ended up with Ken Smith's. Um, and, uh, and 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 for me, the reason why, because I was playing around with the, yeah, I was, okay, let me rewind. Let me re rewind, give give context. I'm doing an album and, yes. um, and Simon King has like, he's, he's written a bunch of tracks to the album, but this one particular track that he sent over really reminded me of um, an Alan Holdsworth record, or, or it was very kind of similar to an Al Alan Holdsworth kind of style. So I was just like, I just went deep. I was like playing it. I was yeah. like practicing because it was just a beast to play. I was practicing it. And I was like doing it on, on you know, on my other bass. I was like, I'm not sure this is the sound. I'm not sure this is the sound. So I was like, I picked up the Ken Smith 4. I was playing that. I was like, maybe this is the sound. And then I was listening to that, you know, that, that record, Alan Holdsworth. It's um, called... Uh, hard hat area so check that album out if you've not already and you're into fusion um hard hat area and schoolie Saracen on that mm. album has this just killing bass sound now it's actually not a smith it's a um it's a tobias i think ah. pre, pre gibson before yes, gibson sure. bought tobias um and it's uh but it still has this there's something about the the essence of the tone which is inherently not like a jazz based style thing. It's like right. a modern active thing. And I was like, maybe that's, the, maybe that's what I'm looking for on this album. Maybe I'm doing sort of like a modern active thing. So, and that just led me to going on reverb and, you know, and a few bad choices led me to, <laughs> led me to uh, <laughs> put, 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 my, put my debit card in on the, uh, on, on reverb.com. And then, you know, and that was, that was that. And then it was on its way to Ian's. And uh, so a Ken Smith is on its way. And if you're wondering why I'm not using this six string here, which is the Mane, it's the, this has like a really like completely different sound to what I'm hearing in my head for the album that I'm putting together. This is like quite an acoustic sounding instrument. Yes. Sounds beautiful. But I think that 
I want to really lean into the fusion. I want yes. people to be like, oh, this is like late 80s, early 90s. This is just like, Dude, you I'm know. I'm so glad you're up. doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you're doing it. Like, I think it's so cool that, like, you're doubling down on the thing that you love and, like, just <laughs> yeah. making an unapologetic, like, late yeah. 80s, early 90s fusion record. And the stuff, the stuff that you've put up that you and Sai have worked on together, it's insane. It's insane. It, it's crackers, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It's crackers. Yeah. It's it's a beast to play. It's gonna be it, it's gonna be really fun. So uh, I'm looking like on. So here's here's the actual truth about. It. I'm not sure whether it is gonna be the Ken Smith until I sit down. <laughs> yeah. This sounds insane to say until it, I sit down with it and yep. then you know play that music and that bass and listen to it. Of I'm not course. sure whether it's going to be the Ken Smith, but it was willi- it, I was willing to take the risk. And I've got this oh. killing, it's ni- 1995 um, BT6 um, in, in great condition. So I'm really excited. So about beautiful. It. It's actually different to yours. Yours has got the walnut faces, hasn't it? Yeah, I think and so. I think this is walnut. Something else, actually. Yeah, it's walnut. Yes. Yeah, I think mine's called Murado or something. And or yours something is not like lacquered. And, which it's looks really like cool. Though. It's like kind of satiny looking. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. I, this I will one's say, also um, satin as well. Oh, my cool. Original, my eighty, I think it's an eighty-four Smith, the four string. That, that four that's, string, yeah. Oh, dude, it's so sick. It's yeah. so sick. Yeah, I, like, I will say too. Like I, you know, as a kid, of course, couldn't afford a Ken Smith, and I lived in Montana. This, you know, super far out from any cities. There was nothing like. There was no place to go. The nearest place was Base, Nor- Base Northwest in oh, yeah. Seattle. Yeah. Remember that place? Yeah, and dude. that was a nine-hour drive. So that wasn't oh, happening on a you know on a frequent basis. But uh, yeah. I remember I bought the strings. There's a place that sold Ken Smith dude, did, bass just, strings. Just hold up, dude. Did, hold up. Did you ever make the drive? Did oh, you ever I, do that? Yes. So Seattle, Seattle was the nearest big city to us. And did that's you do where it? we would go. Oh, yeah. Did you do it for that base shop? Yeah. For sure. Well, we had family there I too. I freaking love you, dude. Yeah. I love we, you even more. <laughs> You're like, yeah. nine hours? Yeah, baby. Twice dude, a year. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We would do it about twice a year. And Base Northwest oh, was a huge draw. I bought a few instruments from them over the years. Um, it was incredible. I think Evan was the owner. If I, if I remember, he always would say in the descriptions of every bass at the end, it would say, and it has a real sleek feel. <laughs> <laughs> so any bass, dude, any bass any he bass. talked about, it was like, and it has feel. a real sleek feel. <laughs> 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 but they were such a cool shop. They were so cool. Um, but yeah, man, I remember getting the Ken Smith strings and on the string pack, it was brilliant branding because they always had either a BT or a bgr i will i don't know the other body shape name but they have that other body shape that has like longer horns and that would all be on the cover of the strings there'd be a, you know the the you know the base would look like this right on yeah, the on yeah. the pack of the strings and i just remember thinking oh those are incredible so i would get the strings and look at that and pine away and then pull them out and put them on my sorry carvin, <laughs> which actually is a pretty <laughs> badass base. Actually, it was a pretty cool base. But yeah, man. So for me, it was like advertising. Um, and of course, John yeah. Patitucci. But honestly, I think it was more about seeing like aesthetically seeing that instrument as a kid on all the strings that I used. It was just like, well, someday, maybe. Yeah, that's the sort of like that. That's the pinnacle, isn't it? And I guess also just to, just to call it out that I actually it's a weird thing to say. I kind of run hot and cold with with my Ken Smith, even yeah. though yeah. this is just such a weird thing to say. Um, even though it would be one of the two bases, I've got two arms, right? I've got. I'm going to grab two bases if everything's if 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 something's going to blow up, I have to run. The house is on fire. I need to grab yes. two bases. Yes, the Ken Smith is going to be one of those bases. But I, I do run hot and cold with it. And I don't run hot and cold uh, with it because of the feel of it, or the shape of it, or the look of it. It is the sound of it. Yeah. It sounds like a Ken Smith. I would yes. say that Ken Smiths have one of the most unique sounds of any modern basses. It's <laughs> so it's, identifiable. 
It's super weird, isn't it? And it's even so when I play it acoustically and not plugged in, it sounds like a Smith. <laughs> and you might be thinking, what are you even talking about, Scott? On, well, you kind of got to try it out, but there's something very weird. It's weird's the wrong name, the wrong word. It's there's something really unique about the 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 low end, the tightness of the low end, but also the upper mids as well. So it's got this really tight low end, like. So I've got an F bass just over to the left of me right now. That F bass has just got like a big low end. It's just like, it's not floppy or anything like that, but it's just big, wide, right? Yes. The Smith has got like this super tight low end. Yeah. It's like really, it's like tight, it you in. know. Yeah, it's like super tight. And then it's also got this really unique upper mid thing going on in the upper mid register that's almost like a bell or like ha ha type quality zing, ging, ging. yeah like a zing zing type quality yeah. and when you play it soloed it's kind of like what i found is it's a little bit like fretless bass for me i can play fretless bass for a while and really love it after a while it's like i've, I've just been eating too much of the same thing i'm like oh i need a bit of a change it's like mm. a really strong taste you know, if you just ate curry every day, you yeah. just like, give me a freaking break, man. It's a really, <laughs> yeah, it's a really mm. strong personality in terms of like a tonal personality. Yes. And it can, it, and for me, it maybe like burns me out a little bit. All of that, so that's why I don't play it all the time. So if you've seen me using it on YouTube, I used it for a bunch, like for months and months, yes. maybe like six months. And then I kind of like went on to play something. I think it was the F, but whatever it was, it was something else, right? Um, something with where the, the, the tonal character or the tonal personality of it wasn't as, um, I guess, as strong. It was just sort of like, yeah, that's just a cool sounding bass. It's not like that Smith sound. Right. It's not so or, signature. Exactly, but I will say that I think that um, in the in the same way, kind of like a P bass does, I guess, like a P bass sits in a mix in a really unique way. A Smith sits in the mix in a really unique way, and I think it's because of that tight bottom end yeah. and that mid thing. It's yes. like, oh, it's it's really unique. There's there's a YouTube video online just um i haven't got it here and there's a guy you guys can go and search if you want it's a guy it's like ken smith versus federa oh okay yes. it's have you seen it i haven't but i'd love to oh you should check it out dude because the smith sounds like a smith yeah of course it does it's a smith right. because oh here's the deal as well all smiths sound like smiths they do. whether they yeah whether they've got like whether they've got, they've got maple tops or walnut tops doesn't they matter all sound like a smith right <laughs> yeah. um and I, and I love that. I really like that. Um, but check it out. When you listen to that video of Ken Smith versus the Federa, in that video, in my opinion, the Smith slays the Federa. Wow. And it's within, them, within the mix, there's just something really special about it. There's something. And, and I love Federa. But there's just something about the way it sits in the mix. And he's playing a Jill, Jill Scott track. Oh. It just sounds oh, wicked. I got to check yeah. it out. Yeah. I, you know, that's something too for me, like that thing of that sonic signature, you take a risk. I mean, I don't think you can put, I don't think if you order a Ken Smith, you can have them put Aguilar pickups in it or EMGs, no. or right? It's like they do a thing for better or for worse, right? And so not a, maybe not everybody's going to like that thing. You might want to have Nordstrand pickups in it. Well, you could do it yourself afterwards, but they're not going to do it. And I think that's cool. They're yes. committing to a thing. And Ken Smith, I've heard all kinds of tales about his He's a legend, dude. He's a legend. <laughs> I think like I, I follow him on Instagram and yeah, you know, same. okay, let's give him like let's give the context. So like talk bass used to be a huge thing back in the day to yeah. where we if you were a bass player, the only place really you could hang out online and and reach an international community of other bass players was talk bass. Yes. There was a, there's something called bass chat in the UK, which is very similar, but it wasn't as international as talk bass was. So you know, everybody used to hang out on talk bass. It was great, and like Ken Smith was on there, and like he ended up getting banned, you know, <laughs> because right. he he was just oh. like kicking people's butts on there, and. You know, and he, as it turns out, and, and people said some like pretty, pretty gnarly things about Ken, um, but I actually I love it, man. And and it all comes <laughs> down to basically Ken back in the day. Um, 
I think he had a, a bit of a spiky personality, maybe yeah, at some yeah. at some points, and wasn't afraid to unleash unleash it, right? And I actually love it because I, I'm like, <laughs> I freaking love that guy. Honestly, I actually watch him on Instagram sometimes, and I'm like, Ken, stop acting. I want to see the. I just like uh, unleash yeah, the like, beast. You're too nice, dude. You're too nice. I want to see the. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's like just super mellowed with age as well, you know. And and I'm and I'm sure that there's always two sides to every story. I actually really love. I sometimes go back and read those old stories of Ken Smith on those, you know, <laughs> because some of them are sort of like freaking great, and some of them I'm, I'm sure have been, you know, twisted of and course, yes. changed over time. But one of one of them was like some guy calls the, the base shop, you know, the the, the Smith uh, the workshop, and the like. You know, and Ken Smith picks up the uh, picks up the phone, and 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 the guy's like, "Oh yeah, I'm looking to buy a base." And Ken Smith is like, "Are you a professional?" And he's like, uh, "No." And he's like, oh, "These bases are professional for for, for professionals only." Boom, <laughs> or, or something like that. I mean, like hangs up the phone. I'm like. <laughs> the balls, the balls on this guy. That is just, so ridiculous. <laughs> if Ken or John, like, because obviously uh, John Smith, his son, yeah. is a monstrous bass player. Totally. Like, he is, he's a monster. So if anybody knows Ken or knows John, give them a shout out. Just tell them that I absolutely love them. <laughs> and Ken, I love you for all of those old cool tales of like, oh my word, you know what I mean? Like the on talk bass and stuff like that. I find it hilarious. Dude, it's funny because I... <laughs> Check this out. Uh, I reached out to Ken Smith uh, early in my tenure at SBL to see if he, because we were going to try to get a video together. I did all those like classic bases, 10 classic bases you need to play before you die video. Then we were going to do a modern one. And I didn't have a Smith at the time. That might have even been before. No, maybe you had yours. But I mean, it was it was a while ago, right? And I reached out and said, would you be willing to send out a, a base for the video? Um so that we could we could do this video and you know and it not to keep not you know nothing like that but just to and he was like basically wrote me back like absolutely not um, <laughs> why, and then he was like why don't you let my son make your video <laughs> <laughs> I love it dude and at the I time I at the love time, him. I didn't even know that his son <laughs> was like a player. You know what I mean? Oh, I was got like, it. Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, 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 like, it just yeah, felt yeah. like the most insane nepotism. But that might actually be <laughs> super dope, man. <laughs> so, so, John, come on, man. Let's let's make a Ken Smith video. That would be so fun, man. I, I would so love great. to make something. I would love to make something with them. Like, something I heard as well. They're actually, um, the guy that makes Brubaker bases is making Smiths now, I think. Yes, that's right. There was like something on talk base about that they had to move the manufacturing over to Brubaker or something like that, and it, and that got me thinking about. It actually made me sad that it got me thinking about all of the all of the people that we know and love, just like Ken Smith, right? Like Ken Smith, Mike Tobias, uh, Roger Sadowski, yeah. Vinny Federa, like that. Check it out; they're all pretty much the same age. They're all in their early seventies. Yes, and I was like, "Holy shit!" You know, that these guys, like, some of them are actually just going to disappear, and yeah. and it's 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 not as big as uh, you know those companies, but status or status, as you guys call it. Yep, th- those guys are closing up shop, and nobody's taking the business. It's like they are closing. There will be no no more of those bases available. I do wonder of those other bases I've mentioned, and other people like I know, like Chris May over here, like Overwater bases that I've been connected with for all of my career like chris is in his 70s yes you know i'm like what's gonna happen and 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 it's what's interesting is this has never happened before right we talk about something that's never happened before all of these yeah all of these bass players alembics another one you know all of these carl thompson all of these bass manufacturers were started in the mid 70s for the most part yes. like you yeah, know for right. the most part like you know there's a few a bit later a few a bit early all and then they've been doing it their entire career and they're all now in their early 70s for the most part yes, yes. so what's going to happen are they are they all just going to move on like i'm slightly anxious about it to be honest like i am i mean I'm I, like oh shit like I, is there yeah. a uh, yeah i'm just just to put it out there i'm, a, I'm worried about it 
<laughs> um, and Does I was SBL wondering... just need to swoop in, dude, and <laughs> just buy some mm. buy some classic bass brands? <laughs> I don't know. Man. Check this I, out. I don't know. Check yeah. this out. I mean, so Stuart Spector is in that list too. He was one of okay, the original yeah, dudes yeah. making making stuff in Brooklyn in the seventies. So Stuart, Ned Steinberger, Ken Smith, Vinny Fodera, th those guys were like the the four yeah. horsemen. And um Stuart just sold to Korg. So, you know, the story of Spectre, right, just briefly, is that he had it, he sold it to Kramer. He ended up buying it back and then using SSD, Stuart Spectre Design. Then he yeah. then he managed to get just the the brand patent Spectre back. And then he's in his 70s, right? He want, He's a fly fisherman. That's all he wants to do. And so he yeah. ended up selling to Korg. And, and I have done some work for them. Um, and I think that transition is actually really great. I think what they're doing there now under Korg, I mean, dollars and leadership yeah. is amazing. Obviously, the team is still the same. They hired an, an incredible shop manager, uh, Will, to come in, who used to work at Fodera, actually. And he's there now um, doing a great job. So hopefully, some of these brands, like, it's, it blows my mind that Status hasn't been acquired by, like, why hasn't someone bought that brand? I, I think, um, so I, I could be completely wrong here i asked the same question I, I can't remember who i asked but it was somebody that that was in the know um or, or could have been in the know and they said all of the individuals all the, the entire team are all the same age they're all actually you know like retirement age basically Crazy. so if somebody was to acquire the company they would need to insert an entire new team and that's yes. a heavy lift. That's a super heavy lift. Um, so I think that I think it's a great move if they can be acquired because obviously it gets it gives the the founder of the company they get some money back. They get a payoff for all of the hard work and the brand that they've created, and then their legacy can live on. But I think that also they need to get a team in place that can that can actually be acquired. So it sounds like Spectre did. Status obviously didn't. Uh, I think Federa. I think they'll be fine because um, they're bringing in younger the, people. They're and, bringing yeah. in like obviously Mike Bendy's running sort of like he's sort of like I think he's the head of marketing or head of sales over there. He's like he he'll be younger than us, right? And there's yeah. like a lot of younger individuals involved in Federa. Uh, Ken Smith is a much smaller setup, so I'm not right. sure what's going to happen with Ken Smith. Um, Chris May over at Overwater Bases, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Like, they need a manager. That's the issue. They need a manager. They need a shop manager, not just like, yeah, they need a, a shop manager. And, um, yeah, it's – some of them have got, you know, kids that can take – like Mike Tobias, for instance, MTD. I know that his son uh, works alongside him, so that – might be uh how that one rolls out obviously yeah. spencer spencer over look like so lull spencer is a great lull. example yep. of this like you know like spencer's dad passed away and yes. spencer took the reins and now he's running it so that is a and now obviously lull bases will hopefully go from strength to strength and and be um led under the stewardship of spencer but the other ones i'm not sure i'm not sure what their team makeup's like but in terms of a company acquiring those uh those those manufacturers those uh those workshops um i i imagine they'll have to have like a a a, a team in place that aren't all like you know 60 plus you, Man, you would is, need to have it so that's like, yeah. wild yeah and i think specter was in that zone too it was like all buddies these guys were all like homies they hung yeah. out together, and and I think they had to really work to to get the new blood. I remember talking to Will too, and his last name is DeYoung. Will DeYoung, who is the hey, shop Will. manager at Spectre. Will is the I mean, Will man, if you listen to this, I love you so much. He he helped me pick out all these woods and all this stuff for a build um, at Spectre. Is he the guy uh, that was in sort of like some of the early uh, Federa videos with Mike? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, glasses. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to describe him. Like he's got a nose, he has hair, he has glasses. Has he got he's got great, two eyes, he, two ears. Has he got great, re, like luscious black, br like brill creamed hair? No, uh, I'm gonna say that, no. Not that guy. He has luscious, <laughs> lovely hair, but it is certainly not black. It's brown. Not black. Oh, well. <laughs> sorry, Will. Check hey, Will. Out. How you he, doing? <laughs> hey, Will. 
Hey, Will. <laughs> uh, Will was telling you, you me might want that to, you, you you might want to uh, think about dyeing your hair black. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what even is brill clean cream? What is brill that? cream is that sort of like it's it's like extreme hair gel. I, I don't know what it okay. is. Maybe it's not like okay. I'll tell you what, I've never used it. But I've heard of it. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I think it's what it's like the there. guys in the nineteen fifties used to use. But I think that like, uh, Mike, yeah, the fonts. Mike, yeah, right. like Mike Bendy, like he when we were doing that session for SB you know, we were doing that course with him with Felix. Yeah. M- Mike Bendy came in, his hair, dude. It was so good. It was yeah, like dude. he could have played anything that day and it wouldn't have made a difference. I was just staring at his hair. Hold on, look at that hair. Oh, so good. The reason I mentioned it is because it looked solid. It looked like the, there might have been a bit of brill cream on there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Will has great hair, but he's not a Brill Cream guy, I don't think. <laughs> but he was telling me this tale, and I don't think he would m- mind me saying this: that Fodera went through that stuff too, and like it had to figure out. Like there, there becomes people in those shops that are so good at what they do, and are maybe a type of personality where they're not just sharing that knowledge, right? So he was mentioning a guy at Fodera that does a certain part of the process, I don't even remember what, but a certain kind of carve or a certain kind of inlay, but something that is like important to the process of building those yeah. bases. And he just wasn't the guy that was going to like bring in an apprentice and, you know, and then if you want it, so if the company wants to put an apprentice with him, it's prickly, you know, he's like doing his work, but he's old, right? Or older, yeah, yeah. or what if he yeah. quits or what if he, you know, and you start to sort of think like, wow, I mean, when it starts out, nobody's thinking about that stuff. It's like, hey, we're young and we're just doing something cool and we're putting a middle finger yeah. to the man and all that. And then, wow, now you sort of become this business. And if you want to carry it on, I mean, you know, you have to have, you have to try train people in. You have to open the yeah. doors to younger people who are hungry, who are not going to be as knowledgeable, as skilled, and you have to pass along that stuff. I mean, I think uh, I think that's huge for brand legacy to continue. You have to always be thinking about pulling in new people. Yeah, 100%, man. And I think that that's what happened with Ken Smith. At least that's what I read on TalkBase. Excuse me if I'm like obviously you know it's totally incorrect, but that's what I read. Somebody, somebody read on uh, wrote on Talkbase that um, somebody a um, one of the builders there, I think maybe the main builder passed away, mm. and and they were like because Ken doesn't build, he he does all the finishing, I think. Uh, but one of the builders passed away, and, and they were like, "Oh, what we're going to do?" So that's when like manufacturing was moved to Brubaker. And uh, and now I'm assuming that Ken still does all the finishing and stuff like that. But yeah, it's it's interesting, and I think that like I have because I'm just sort of like a base nerd. Of course, I have thought, ooh, maybe you know, maybe in the future SBL could acquire a base company, like you know, yeah. and and yeah. will. But yeah, but I think that yeah, but there's a, <laughs> there's a big but. I think that of course, yeah. It is a completely different business. And, oh, it really yeah, is. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not just like something you get to, I mean, you know, from being inspector, I mean, that is a, that is a intense operation that is, yeah. has a huge, not a huge, but it has several full-time staff that are just in marketing and in communication and shop management and I mean, man, it's crazy, let alone all yeah. the builders and all the people. I mean, you know, yeah, it's a company. It's a full-on company. <laughs> it's a full-on yeah. company, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and, like, with people to look after and, right. you know, culture to build. And it's yes, interesting exactly. sort of like when you haven't worked in a company, isn't it? Like, because I, I, I hadn't, right? Before SBL, I hadn't yeah. worked in a company. I was like, well, and I, I guess that my, um, my opinion about like what it would be like to work in a company or care for a company would be like, well, you just get a, you know, a set of individuals that are all badasses and then you just go at it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just go and nobody ever rubs anybody up the wrong way and nobody ever stands on anybody's toes and nobody's ever grumpy and, you know, (laughs) and nobody ever has like a sort of like a family member that like passes away and they're traumatized for the next sort of like X amount of like, and that, but, it's humans, right? So when you, of course. yeah, like running teams is actually, 
incredibly fascinating and challenging at times you know so i think that um yeah it's 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 definitely interesting and then you've obviously got you know like all of the financial side of it as well is crazy but yeah oh so oh. Crazy. okay anyway now which which base company should we buy in <laughs> 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 That would be Dude. hilarious. Next podcast. <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> Last week we bought we bought two Ken Smith bases. This week we've just bought Ken Smith. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that would be wild, man. That would be wild. Wow, man. Wow. Well, hey, stranger things have happened. Stranger Dude. things have happened. I will say, though, check this out. You know, there's always this thing around, like, oh, when companies get acquired, uh, you know, they go downhill and whatever. I, I don't know. It'll be so interesting to compare sixes. But this base is a tw- 2021. So this is oh, new. Oh, so it's super new, yeah. So this is new. Super so new, this yeah. must be the Brubaker process. Dude, uh, like would you build. screw around with Ken Smith? If you were making his bases... No, no. He's going to tell you a new one. Like everything. Yeah, like Ken, no. <laughs> Ken, yeah, I, the, I mean, <laughs> but because it's got to be, well, I don't know what the process is. If it's CNC'd or like parts of it are CNC'd or if it's all hand built, I actually don't know. But it is lovely. Um, that said, I don't really have a good, um, I mean, I played your 80s one, but it's a four and it's so, so different to this. It, but I mean, I'm yeah, just thrilled yeah. with this one. And I will say too, I have a, I've played a bunch of Spectres over the years, Kramer stuff, um, the stuff when SSD was around, the, then when Stuart got his, his name back and he was building in the 2000 teens. And the new stuff under the new shop is better, I think. Really? Least, yeah. Yeah. Like, the quality control is better, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, now, of, of course, there's probably unicorns of the olden days. Like you talk to Doug Wimbish, and he he thinks that you know the the mid '80s ones are the best. But sometimes I think that stuff is about how you bond with an instrument. Like yeah, yeah. imagine he hadn't had any prior knowledge, and then just there were two. Which one would he choose? Well, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it might be the new one. Um, not this. I mean, I love vintage instruments. I love them. But yeah. I if I don't have um, a relationship with a vintage instrument, I'm fine buying something new. That that's fine. That said, you have you have the cooler one because you have a legit real deal. Ken Smith. We'll see, dude. We'll see, base, dude. dude. Oh, I wonder, so like, cool. oh man, yeah. We'll see. I, I need to try you. I need to go out to Minneapolis. If I come out yeah. to Minneapolis, I'll bring the Smith, man. I'll bring the. Let's Smith. go. <laughs> yeah, because you're coming yes. out here, but like obviously you'll be bringing out your the bass to record with, right? So yeah. I will bring the Smith to Minneapolis, oh. and we'll have like a a, a bass off. It'll be uh, I think incredible. Be, yeah, wicked. We'll just have Dude. we'll just be playing up high on the C string, and the B string will just be ringing down below. And... Oh, dude, I'm just gonna take all the other strings <laughs> off, but I'm just gonna only play the C string. <laughs> Right. When I play ah! my F, when I play my F bass, I'm only going to play slap bass. It's just like I'm a, I'm actually not a bass player anymore. I'm a slap bass player. And when yeah. I play my Smith, I'm only going to play the C string. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> People will be hiring me for gigs. I'll be like, well, you know, like what my thing is, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only thing I do, right? Like the only thing I do is you have this just giant plank of wood with just the C string. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Just the C string. Uh. Dude, tell me tell me why tell me why we play six string basses. Or tell me why you play six or tell me why the people out there should even consider like why what's this obsession that we have now with this bass? Why? Okay. So B strings, I'll I'll subdivide it out. B strings are just awesome. That's and true. I'll just I'll throw it out there that they're not that awesome until you get in a band. Then they're actually mm. really awesome. Like, they're okay playing at home, but when you get on a gig and, like, you play that low D, it's a thing. And when you it play is. that C and you're just like, bump, duh, oh, and you play that C, <laughs> it is a whole experience it's that true. cannot be. Yeah, and I think that... I actually think that if people sort of... I just hung out at home and played, maybe most people play four string... <laughs> But just when you get on that gig live, that, that that fifth string just kicks butt. And then for the C string, I think that um, 
it's it's for the the melodic stuff. It's the soloing. It's it's that whole you know that whole thing and chord shapes maybe yeah chords and stuff like yeah. that for sure. Um, not to say that you need a six string to be able to solo because there are some fantastic soloists out there. Uh, Gary Willis doesn't play with a C string. Um, uh, Hadrian Farone doesn't play with a C string. Oh, uh, I, are you uh, serious? I thought he yeah. did. No, dude, just a normal five string bass. B to G. Yeah, Evan Marion, five string, just normal B to G. You're right. So there's all of these players that are crazy soloists and just play B to G. But, you know, there, you know, there are, it's just gra- like when I hear people play that on the C string, oh, it, it, it's, it's nice. It uh, but you're not cool. actually getting that many. You're only getting actually five or six more frets. I know. If you think about it. You're, You're right. not actually getting that many more frets, but just because of where it is on the instrument, it means that you play it in a different way. So that that's why I, you know, not that I play it. I haven't even, I've got this one down here, which I really like, but, you know, it's on its way, obviously. We'll see if I play it. Like I do, I, I, I'm aiming to play it on the album. Uh, we'll see how that pans out, but, but that's why I really like it. Yeah, that's why I really like it. And if anybody else is thinking about trying a, uh, trying a, uh, a six string we did an interview with oteal burbridge so if you are a mm. member of sbl we've got these incredible interviews that you can check out highly recommend go check out the interview with oteal burbridge he's playing a six string bass in that interview and he says yeah. something really interesting um that i've never heard anybody say before he was he said oh when i'm teaching a student if they've got enough cash on hand to buy a six string bass, even the cheapest of six string yes, basses. Yes, right. He was, he's like, he really recommends going and doing it because he said they learn. He said for him personally, when he got a six string bass, he learned it in a, like a completely different way to what he was doing on a four string. He said he learned yeah. chords and he started learning about chords. And, and I, I think in the interview, I was like, well, could you not just do that on a four string? And he said for him, that that door was open when he played six string. So mm. it's definitely yeah. an, an interesting interview to check out if you haven't already. And he yeah. sounds more interesting. There's as this well. sort of like there's this conception. I mean, I remember when I got my first one, I was in junior high, and I sort of viewed it now as a piano. You know, I didn't yeah. I went from four to six, so I didn't have a five string phase ever. Um and then, you know, I I went backwards. Then I had the six for years and then I sold that and went to a five. But I remember really feeling this thing of like, oh, now I'm a composer. <laughs> you know, oh, like okay. In the yeah. Ninth you grade, just had you know? more. You had more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're right. Yeah. Yes. And you're right, dude. You don't get that. You only get a few more notes. It's not like, you know, the range expands crazy. But I will say from a four to a six, you get more in both directions. You start to look at the instrument differently. And I just started to do things like O'Teal, like droning a low note and then playing a chord figure up high. And I didn't even know what I was doing at first, but it didn't yeah. matter because the sounds were new and fresh. And so for me, like compositionally, um, I mean, and it's so, it's so bass nerdy, but it was, it was just how I did it. I didn't play piano. I didn't really play guitar. I was interested in the bass. So why not start to compose on the bass? And I mean, man, that was a really fruitful time for me of like, I mean, I composed these long sort of through composed bass solo pieces oh, yeah. <laughs> that old Bob oh, yeah, Allison dude. still remembers. He He's loves like, oh, that. Oh, it? dude, yeah. he loved that. I mean, I played him at my high school. I mentioned this before, but I played him at my high school, you know, at choir concerts. And now the intermission, Ian's going to come out and, you know, and the, there's tapping stuff and there's slapping and there's high melodies over droning notes. And I mean, it was my identity. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. And then I got really swayed by trend and by studio work. And it was like, oh, this isn't cool. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. then I was like trying to pretend I'd never done it. And my dad was like, where's the six? And I'm like, dad, that's, that's so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm like, a, I'm a real bass player now. You know, I, but man, like I say, you, there's a threshold you cross where you start that nostalgia thing starts to pull at you really hard. Um, so it's it's amazing. You're gonna you're gonna love yours. Dude, you're gonna love. Gonna yours. Why did you I'm, send I'm gonna... it to me? Tell tell the good people why you sent it to me. Oh, I think the guy was just like, oh, I can't I can't send it to the UK. I was like, oh, 
oh, well, I have a friend in Minneapolis. Can you send it to him? And he was like, yes. I was like, okay, done. And so I'm going to send it to the UK. Yeah, you're going to send it to the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Oh, my dad's wandering around outside. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, he's just wandered off. Dudes, I think that that that, that means I've got to call it. <laughs> dad's in town. Roger. Dad's in town. Yeah, yeah Roger, man. yeah. Roger D, yeah. You got to go hey, check and- on Roger. And while we still got you as well, um, Ian and I were watching a video the other day and the guy in the video was sort of like saying, hey, rem- remember to sort of like tell people to leave reviews on the po- on, on your podcast and stuff like that. And I felt so bad because we never do it. I know, so I know. So if you right. do enjoy this podcast, we will freaking love you forever if you could go to iTunes or wherever Please. you're listening to it and leave us a five-star review only if we're worthy side note we're worthy but go and leave <laughs> go leave us that review we will love you forever we'll put it on the christmas card list and all that good stuff and uh, yeah and other than that dudes dudettes we will see you next time around take it easy bye take care everybody 